And if you could go back to talk to your eight-year-old self, what would you tell him? Don't quit. Don't quit. I, say, I came close to quitting so many times. I came close to stopping everything so many times. I'm thankful that I didn't quit. But I would have told my eight-year-old self, it's going to get a whole lot better. Ah. All right, Black Boy Smile, that's the book. It comes out today, a memoir from Baltimore's D. Watkins. And Lynn Bowie sat down with him, and she joins us now from that beautiful outside. Lynn, what a great interview. My favorite thing he said was, I wrote this book for people who don't believe in happy endings, because he's living it clearly right now. Yeah, Denise, you know, he has such a way with words. Oddly, he's a professional writer. <laughs> but we talk so much about pain, vulnerability, the bravery it takes to talk about the pain, but how it's necessary. That's the only way you can heal. Mm -hmm. So the whole point of his book is doing that self-work, no matter how hard it is, and asking for forgiveness and learning the power of forgiving other people as well. It's really, it's a stunning memoir. And I love that you talked about how much he loved his wife. I'm dying to read more about that in the book. But can you talk a little bit about maybe how his wife and his daughter changed him? It really transformed him. And he recalled meeting his wife, how the universe kept pushing them together. You know, they would separate, come back, separate, come back. It changed him so much, specifically scheduling. <laughs> he says now with the kid, oh, I can't just do whatever I want anymore. She has a strict schedule. She has to take a nap. She has to go to school. So that's the biggest change. But he also says, and this was so funny, he is the soft one in this oh. situation. His mm. wife is the disciplinarian. She's the one who keeps her on track. She's the one who punishes the daughter. And he's the one who swoops in like, oh, baby, are you okay? I still love you. <laughs> <laughs> and he said maybe he'll step up and be the bad guy one day, but he cannot see that happening anytime soon. He well, is very besotted with his daughter. Oh, <laughs> and, and well, he should be. I, you know, I love that he goes back into the schools and that he talks to kids in this city. And he knows what it's like to grow up in some of these rough neighborhoods where finding hope, where finding a belief in yourself is tough. What does he say to these kids when he's, when, because he understands that, what does he say to try and help them believe that they have a future? That's exactly right, Denise. Like, he wants his story to be the example. You know, he got his happy ending. He found his way to where he is now, and he wants them to know that they can too. He's going to do a mini book tour for this book. He wants to get it in as many schools and to the hands of as many young people as he can. Um, the book tour will be smaller because of the pandemic and, you know, everything getting a little bit complicated right now. And he's also, of course, still busy with TV and movies, becoming the board member at the Parkway Theater. And then he is doing press for his episode of We Own This City. And he's also hosting the official podcast for HBO's We Own This City. Wow. He is still editor at large for Salon. And he still teaches at the University of Baltimore. So he is Yikes. very busy and always giving back. <laughs> he's living a good life, that's for sure. And yes, well deserved, too. Great interview, Lynn. Can't wait till we can see you in person, which will be soon. <laughs> But thank you for that. Very soon. Can't That's wait to right. see you guys. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> needs to fund crates of this book into the schools. I agree. Don't you agree, yes. Tim? Maybe it uh, should be you. We need a crate oh. of them here at WJZ. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, that is a very relatable book. So, yes, we certainly wish him well. We want wide distribution for it. And 